Now I have a four cylinder injection pump, it's a CAV rotary pump and it's off, a, off an FE35 four cylinder diesel tractor. Now the FE35, they could be the grey and gold, you know, the, the grey bonnet and the gold chassis, uh, uh, main frame, or they could also be the red bonnet and the grey tractor. But they had a 23C standard engine and a rotary fuel pump. So this pump, it's just grubby. It's, um, it's um, leaking a lot. It's got copper washers under the delivery valves. It's leaking out the shafts and it's leaking leaking down the bottom here on the advance mechanism, on the hydraulic advance. So, so we're going to run through today, just an opportunity um, to run through a pump of this type. I've done a few videos on injection pumps, I'll try and link them in somewhere, perhaps towards the end. And, um, but I haven't done one with the advance mechanism on the bottom here, I don't believe. So, so we'll just chug along and We'll get the top off, we'll, we'll strip it down. We're going to fit a Sparex seal kit once more, which is our, our good old faithful that we always fit. Um, we never have any trouble with it. It's a great kit and it has everything that we need. So, so stay with us. We'll start pulling a few pieces off. Now, this is our main throttle shaft at this end. And I may just bring the camera up a bit, I feel. So, so that's looking down from the top. We have the throttle shaft here, and we have the stopper here. You can see when you, when you have a little bit of tension on the throttle shaft and you pull the stopper, it wants to actually force it back into shut off position. So this has a little hook on the, um, on the stopper. So we'll just pop this off. And we'll just start disassembly. So just follow along. Hopefully you can have a go at your own. That's why I do the videos. So on the top here, we have a nut, a shake proof washer, then a flat washer. And the flat washer helps sit on top of where the two flats are, where it hooks up to the shaft. And then we have a little dust seal and that keeps all the water out of the pump and things like that. So, On the stopper, it's exactly the same. Take note of where they went, those two. They, you can put them on in the wrong spot. Once more, a little dust seal. We have a bleeder here, um, around the other side that you would have bled the pump with. And we have a few screws on this that we don't have on the other pump, but there's no real need to hop into those. The bleeder, I usually like to undo both parts of the bleeder. Just so when we clean it up we can do a nice job. And this also has the tamper seal. So the idea of this tamper seal is when the pump's new, um, they can tell if you've stuck more revs into it or if the diesel shops had a fiddle with the pump over the time they know that um, and you're blaming their pump for blowing up your tractor <laughs> they know that it's um, that you've been in there buggering around that's full of oil and diesel and water and other rubbish so these little bolts on the top here, they're 3.8. I'll get the right spanner in a minute. They show me how to do a diesel pump, I can't even pick me right spanner. So these two little acorn nut screws. Acorn nuts, they're nuts, not screws. Then we should be able to pop the top off. Just start bringing him up a little bit. And then with the handle of a screwdriver, just let these shafts pop down. And we leave them there. And 
you'll see why in a moment. It'll show us exactly where all the springs are set. That's surprisingly tight. So underneath here you have a little ball and it runs down onto here just to make sure you can't over rev it. It'll, it'll actually run. I'm just trying to see where it's rubbed there but I can't actually. And, and now what we have to take note of is where this spring is. Now, I'll bring you in over the top closer so you can just see exactly what's happening with it. Right, now on this back plate, you can see there's a little rivet and there's three holes on the back plate. Now, in this instance, the rivet is in the middle hole. So we can pop that off. You may be able to see that better. You have one, two, three holes up and down here. So what I've done, I've drawn a I've drawn a little picture of that. There it is there. So what I like to do now. Just put a little arrow there just to show where it was. Now, on this other end here, you have a, there's three holes on this little teardrop piece. Now, if you have a look, we're closest to the pivot. This is what everyone mucks up. I mucked it up myself the other day. I misread my own drawing. And so, out of the three holes that it's possible to be, this one was right at the pivot. So, on my little diagram here, I'll put an arrow there. What I did last time, where I went wrong last time, I actually drew the pivot and I counted that as a hole. I, I come from the wrong end, so yeah, learn from mistakes, I suppose. So once we've got that out, now this is your governor plate here. This is your delivery valve. Your delivery valve can get stuck and if there's been a bit of water in the system, your delivery valve gets stuck and it, it doesn't run freely like that. It's actually, um, you can pull on the screw on the throttle um, where this lever goes and where that spring is we just took off, it pulls on here. And so as you change the throttle position, and, and pull the throttle on, it opens up the fuel and it, it pulls against the governor plate here and works against the governor and this fella here, being the metering valve, it decides how much fuel you get. Now if you have a if you have a tractor that for no good reason at all it was running and then all of a sudden it wasn't running, it can well be that all you need to do is undo this. So what you have to look at is you just get it out of the get it out of the hole there. You can see the you can see the slots around it and they decide how much fuel it gets. They line up with a port inside. And so yeah if your tractor was running today and it wouldn't run tomorrow, that is really worth having a look. It's just pop the top off on the tractor. You don't have to pull it off the tractor and check your metering valve. So ours is nice and free. Now another thing is this here is the stopper. Now your stopper I'll just pull them out of the top cover. Your topper stopper sits in the top cover here. And when you turn it, it moves that rod back and forth. 
and in the stop position it pushes on the back of your metering valve and it doesn't matter how much you pull the stopper that won't that won't come into the open position so what can happen is you're driving along I'm having shadow troubles here this morning um, I've got big overhead lights and all you'd wonder why but anyway you can um, you can actually park your tractor up and push the stopper on and then if this metering valve is a bit sticky well the stopper can come back off but it'll be stuck in that off position because that's where it all cooled down so look something to keep in mind that metering valve does a lot okay now we've got all the all the top section out here there's a tiny little bolt that a fifth of the five sixteenth spanner fits now it's got a couple of tiny little lock tabs sometimes with an open end spanner you can just give it a twitch and they hop out of your way like that don't worry about damaging the lock tab doing that you, you get a new one in the kit and there's a couple of lock tabs on these two screws here so we just grab a screwdriver we open them up a little bit usually two on each bolt and they should just undo. If I get my right spanner, I usually have a little open ender for that and I keep going for that. That's the wrong one. Now with that plate, there's a plate that holds the top plate in. You'll notice that on your side, on the stopper side, there's a there's a little opening where the other side rode my fingers there, it's a closed hole. So that goes across to there. And now this governor plate should be able to just lift straight out. Easy as that. There's a little spring here, little spring there, holds it all together as a unit. And there's another little bar at the back there. I'm not sure what that bar does, to tell you the truth. I'm, yeah, I'm just not 100% sure. So that's all you can do at the top here. Probably get rid of the gasket now. Doesn't matter when you get rid of the gasket, just doesn't matter. Now, we have a fitting at the end here. That's just a return. Um, some of these have a check ball in them, and some don't, depends on the system. This one here doesn't, you can see straight through. Nothing to worry about there. Um, while it's on the bracket, or it's in the bracket here, um, sometimes I like to undo some of the harder bolts around the around the pump. There's one just here. There's one over the back here. This normally isn't a breather, a bleeder. They often had a bleeder on this other side down the body and a plain bolt over the back um, you just wire it like that I'm not sure and this little screw is going to hit on that, that fella the side plate 
You may have pulled the side plate off. When you were when you were taking the pump off. This little fella. It's only two screws. And you probably lined it up with the letter G or W or something like that. So Okay, we might shift the camera and we'll move up to this vein pump end. Um, we'll come, uh, come around here and we'll look at all this. Now this here is where the, where the inlet is on, on your pump. Um, the fuel comes in through here, there's a small vein pump hidden in the end here, so we'll, we'll get organised and pop that off. That's three quarter. This is inch and a fifth, inch or fifteen sixteenth, fifteen sixteenth. All right, we'll have to loosen that up on the bench. With a fitting like that that's got no guts in it, it's good to um, use a ring spanner so you have even pressure on each of the six points. This one down the bottom here, not so important. And there's a little brass strainer, that's what I was trying to get to in through here. Um, if all of a sudden you have no fuel, then you've got a bit of a dose of rubbish through. Certainly worth a look at this little screen. We will visit that later. And on the end of the pump here, take note where this screw is here. I believe this pump was running and everything fine, it was just leaking, so um, how far in we go. There'll be a talking point. <laughs> but anyway, look, we'll have a look and see. These take a while. Sometimes um, the videos are, the first video I ever did on these pumps, it took an hour and I edited a lot out and, and I didn't cover a lot. And, people would contact me afterwards and say how do you do this and how do you do that so um, in the Massey Ferguson 135 restoration six speed restoration series there's an hour video on pulling the three cylinder pump apart and an hour video on putting it back together I'm suggesting that this will probably be similar okay so your valve body comes off that's where your rotor where your veins run there's an o-ring seal there and these little fellows here, they're little veins, little vein pump. Now the vein pump, it gives, uh, this also can turn in the housing. Oh, that's tight at the moment. So no need to force it. There's usually a little roll pin. Can you see that there? Yeah, there it is. There's a roll pin there, and that sits in the groove to hold this in the position that it should be. These little veins, they can come out. They're an easily replaceable item. Actually, if I turn the pump, if you look at the gap in here, you'll actually see the veins going back and forth. That's just got hard to turn. There you go. So yes, the, you can get new veins. They uh, they come in pairs, and sometimes if they're worn or any scoring at all on them, I certainly replace them. They're the soft part, like the, the veins are the soft item. And they have a little 
piece out of them. And they should just hook out, and this one doesn't want to this morning. There we go. This rotor here, once you get this out of away, this is a left hand thread from memory, and there's a proper socket to go down there and get that off. But look, we just have no need to do that at all. Um, there's just no no need, so we'll leave it where it is. Now I'll get a nine sixteenth spanner. And all these delivery valves around here, they're just straight on this. So we'll loosen them up. They have copper washers under these. I prefer steel washers due to the pressure. Um, some of these old pumps I see had copper, but the later ones always had the had the steel. So we'll just loosen them up for the time being. That's all we need to do. And we'll drop the camera down and we'll undo the advance mechanism. Right, I've turned the pump around in the bracket just for the sake of filming. And This mechanism down here, that's um, actually I might put another washer and nut over the back here. The wind's blowing up, so it might be a bit noisy in here shortly. Just tighten that up a little bit now. That's the bolt that comes out. And now you'll notice this is a little bit firm. It comes off the ball there. Now this here, I'll try and show you what that does with the advance. It's actually on the cam ring and it decides where your pump sits. Um, and as, as the pressure builds up and they know the motor is going faster and faster they can actually work on this plunger and your timing changes slightly to, um, to accommodate it all so let's have a look I'll get you around the other side and see if I can show you what that little ball does Now at this stage you can see the ball through here and that does the advancing of the pump. Now these can be really tight so look I've got a great big shifting spanner I use and it's got good jaws on it, it's a King Chrome brand one and that one, that's come loose for me. So. Um, yeah, I tried smaller spanners on that and um, they're often that tight that they open up the spanners because it's a, a small spanner that you're using. So, um, yeah, I find big, big shifters good for me. Now, I have to get this little fella out and that gives me access to this screw under here which lets us take this main housing out. Then, then I can give you a bit of an idea what that ring does.
Right, I've undone, I've loosened this little nut. And that gives me clearance now to undo this little screw. And that holds the head in. So the big bolt, this big one holds it in from down the bottom. So we should be able to move that by hand. I've had to bump them out sometimes, so now that's the main head of the pump we've just removed. That's where your little rollers are and all that sort of thing. We'll have a look at that. Now the I'll just put the pump up a bit higher so you can see. I'll drop the camera a bit lower. Now this is the bottom of the pump this way here. And when the advance moves, you can see that cam track, it moves back and forth. So that changes the timing. When the, when the little rollers here, they come around, they miss a bit and then when they come past the cam there, they, they squash together and they fire. So depending on where this is to whether it fires early or a little bit later. So as a hydraulic advance mechanism, it was pretty flash in its day. Um, it uses fuel pressure to do it. So if we undo this, that comes out. Now your cam track can come out. And you can just see a couple of little witness marks there where the circlip was. But you must ensure that you get that in the right way. And in some other videos we say about the importance of getting this circlip in the exact right spot. Now, the, on this pump, Come up a little bit now. On this pump, you can see you have your circlip, then you have a little line there. That's what you're timed to on these pumps. And when you look at the back, you probably can't see it, but you can just see that little line. So on these pumps, you don't actually work to the edge of the circlip, you actually work to that little line. Sorry, I've just got you out of frame there. Yeah, you work to that little line there. So it's not the end of the circlip. On the later pumps, one part of the circlip is rounded and the other part is flat. You line it up with that. And the remarks, when they pulled this pump off, the fella said to me, he says, oh, he said, oh, we watched your video on how to time your engine, as in, um, some of the other engines, like the, the 65 pump we did and the, the 135 pump video we've done. But he said this was out a little bit, probably an eighth of an inch. Well, see, they were probably lining it up to the edge of the circlip where they need to come back to that little line. We don't have to pull that out at this stage. Um, the basket where the weights are doesn't need to come out. We can come around this end and there's a ceiling behind here. So it'll be important for us to have a look at that. So we'll, oh, there's a little eight millimeter Allen key and I use, a, I use a nut gun. Whoop. And you gotta drop everything or you're not really having a go. So I just hang on to this as hard as I can and just give it a quick blurt. That's all it takes. And 
and that screw comes out, it's a fine thread. And then there's a there's a funny shaped spring washer. Now it's sometimes you can get them out of easy, sometimes they're a bugger of a thing. But that's a that's the shape of the washer. It's a more of a spring than a washer. And then up the centre here, there's another washer, and it's a thick steel washer. Uh, you've actually got to line the flats on that up with the master spline to get it out. Now the master spline is this major, this big spline here. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to move just real easy, so we can just pop a screwdriver in here. And See, one of those things, they get a little bit sticky, but once they move, they move easily. you just got to break the seal. Someone's going to give us trouble, but anyway. So that comes out. And there's your seal. So if you've been having trouble with um, diesel in your engine oil, and it's losing a fair bit, that's a fair chance that's where it is. I can't get that washer out for the moment, it's being a bang in the bottom. Now, we just usually put a screwdriver in here and pop that out. Now this circlip, if we were just resealing it and not tidying the whole pump up, I'll just bring you a bit wider here. If we were just resealing it and not doing the whole pump up, where this circlip is would have no meaning to us at all. It, it just doesn't matter. You can see the circlip in there I believe. right down that end there. So look, what we do, I'm going to um, tidy this pump up nicely for this fella and um, we're going to actually bead blast the housing so I will pull the basket out but what it's important to do is scribe a line exactly, you can, you can scribe a line on both or just on one or something like that so when we put that circlip in the circlip glows to the exact same place again. So I'll just get a get my scriber here. You can use an engraver or use whatever you like. So if I put a run there and another one there. That should let us know exactly where we were. And there's the other side of the circuit through. So now we can pop that circuit out. It's important that you let it ping onto the floor. 
You're not doing the job properly if it doesn't do that. And this is your weight basket. Now there is an O-ring there on your weight basket. There he is there. It's actually quite nice and soft on this pump. So there is an O-ring in that groove there. Then all that will slide out. But they're a handful, these bloody things, to get them back in properly. <laughs> I'll just slide that O-ring down because the weight basket doesn't want to come past that O-ring. So that helps keep the whole show together just a little bit easier. And now we have a bare housing. So I'll go and clean all that up. I usually mask up all of this sort of stuff. It says CC's at 100 strokes, 38. Yeah, 38 at 800 RPM. And we can't read this anymore, but that's the original plate. There is a number R2118TA and there's an arrow showing direction of rotation. So, so we'll, um, we'll tidy this bit up, or we'll take that out of the way so we can tidy it up. Now, the thing we do look at, I look at anyway, Put that, put that in the vice there for you. Now this is the head of the pump, and when the when the pump's pumping, it pushes pressure in, and there's a couple of plungers in under here. Puts pressure in, and pushes these rollers out against the cam. So the cam track sits over there and it turns inside the cam track. But when the little vein pump at the end puts pressure out, it pops those rollers out and puts the, um, well makes the rollers follow the cam track as much as they're allowed with this little rolling setter here. Um, take note of where everything is here. You can, you will have little shadows. The, there's a timing mark there. Yep, I believe you can see that. And that's on that side of the black ring. So get that pretty close. You will have a shadow mark here that you can work off though. And You'll see it's this top ring here, it's, it's all the way around. Where the adjustment is and where this little bar is, the gap goes there. That lines up just to that side of there. There's no other lines on this body all around here. So it can really only go in the one spot. Now, they're 516, those little furry headed fellas. And I either hold it in the vise or just grab across across these two flats. So now you can adjust the fuel by moving by moving the groove here back and forth it actually adjusts the adjusts the fuel setting on your pump that's all it does you can do that through the side you can hot your tractor up the buggery if you want to <laughs> anyway we'll pop this top off pop the lock ring off On all this, there's witness marks everywhere. And 
you'll see you'll see the shadows where everything sat. Look for that, it does help. Now on the top of the head, when you actually adjust the fuel setting, you'll see in there you can see the rollers and depending on where the fuel setting is if it's way back here those rollers come out further and then if it's way back here they can't travel as far so that's how they decide how much fuel pumps in each stroke now you'll see a shadow there on where this sat and these little rollers They only sit one way so that so that they sit in the cam here properly. So there's a roller on each side, there's two. Then you'll see the little plunger dropping out in here. There's two of those as well. And if you've had water in your system, because all this is just floating through on its own, it's certainly possible that these little rollers get stuck and so they stick out. Now uh, how it works is your fuel transfer pump at the end here, it puts a certain pressure, a few pound in and that pops these rollers or these plungers out then they push out on the back of the, you'll see a little mark there, they push out on the rollers and once they push out on the rollers, the rollers can only go so far. So you can understand that if the rollers let it pump that much each side, well you'd have a lot more fuel than if it only went that much. So that's how it works. Those must be very free in there. Now this, there's a lower circlip in here and when you put the top on, make sure you engage that lower circlip. That's a mistake I've made in the past. So it has to, it has to engage with that lower, with that little piece there. And you can actually turn that. And I think you can see that. See if the whole show is turning. So you must line that up and if you were to undo this here, well this would come out and you can actually replace these heads but, um, but look for dismantling, um, I'm not going to dismantle it any further than that, there's no need for me, um, actually there is a couple of things we could do, one of them is we'll just pop this apart for a look. That's a, the governor. We'll pop him in the vice. I like to use ring spanners, but sometimes by the time you have the lead going into the ring spanner you need to grind that off sometimes I reckon. I don't do many of these particular pumps. I wonder why there's a lot of 23 C's around. O-ring, there's an O-ring on the fitting, and we have a spring, that holds pressure against this plunger, so yeah depending on the fuel pressure it works against the end of the spring and that decides if they'd like to advance the pump or not. This fella here, he'll just have an O-ring on him.
just too tight for the fingers. Oop, and as you have to do that, drop it on the floor, it's quite important. You'll see an interesting thing is see, I don't know if you can or not, there's a little hole here and that's where some fuel pressure is and you can see it comes out here, out this hole. So that's how the fuel gets to the end of this plunger. It comes up that port there and works against the spring. So there is a screw on the end there that is probably a spring adjustment. I don't know how to adjust that. I'm not going to play with that. So that's that bit done. And now this fella here, I'll take the screws out of there. And we just got to undo this top here. There's a little cap in there. All the others I've done, that cap must have come loose or disappeared. Be mindful of this little um, pin there. Don't damage that in the vise. Last one of these I did was very tight. You can probably hear a bit of a rattle outside and that's the doors, it's, it's quite a windy morning. And we're up early, we have power boat racing starting at 10 o'clock this morning. Just near me there, we're on the river so. So we're trying to get a little bit done before then. There's not a chance of a video once that starts. But anyway, everyone has their own hobbies. Just get the right tool and you're away. Clean that up. There's a little screw just in there for the shuttle. Okay, we go in first, half, one, one and, a half. One and three quarters. I might write that on my box over here. Plunger. Now spring. If I can get that next little piece out. As long as I hold it in the vice properly, I'll be right.
So that's another spring and a, a washer that it sits down onto. Oops, and that was the plunger I was looking for. That little plunger hits a little shuttle, the fuel pressure just decides. It pushes against that little light hairspring here, and that decides um, whether the whether the vane pump on the end here just loops the fuel there within itself, or whether it sends it down the port because it's needed into the head. So if the pressure's built up to a certain certain thing in the pump, the vane pump can pump an awful lot more fuel than the um, main injection pump can so at low revs this will probably be whacking a fair bit of fuel out and the tractor's not actually using much so that little shuttle it um it just bypasses within the head of the pump here and sometimes there's a tiny little spring down the bottom to stop that from bottoming out no, there's nothing more coming out of there now, you should be able to hold this fitting firmly. Find our three quarter spanner here. And that's our inlet filter. You can check that on the tractor, you don't have to pull it off the tractor to check that. I'll just sit him in there so I don't drop another thing on the floor. <laughs> Having a day of it, aren't I? And on this top cover here, these screws don't really need playing with. They'll be okay. We can leave them at the original setting and just tidy it up. The housing's not too warm. Now, your throttle shaft and your shop stopper shaft both have O-rings and that's what stops the fuel stops the fuel coming up out of them. Um, the O-ring seal inside the housing there. So, so look, that's as far as I'm going to go. I'll go and tidy everything up, give everything a good wash and a blow and all that. And um, yeah, look, we'll come back and start assembling. I often get asked how I get the housings and that so clean. After I give them a bit of a bath, I have a blast cabinet. So I put them in the blast cabinet here. I run glass beads in the cabinet. Now, I won't be able to show you in there. It's just a dusty mess, but um, you'll see how it goes in. I'll do a bit of blasting and we'll bring it out. And I'll show you the difference. That's just a quick squirt and you can see the difference. It does a great job. So yeah, if you're playing with tractors, I find they're handy. I have a this this is my small glass cabinet. It has glass bead, I have a bigger one with garnet in it. But you can certainly see how quick and easy it is. With the right gear so i'll do i'll mask up the other housings too and do that so yeah that's it